Time for the 49ers Rush Podcast. And here's your host, John Chapman. What is going on, Faithful? It is absolutely incredible to be with you today. And we've got a special show. We've got an absolute stud from the Seahawks, kind of the enemy, but we're promoting kindness today. We have the man himself, Lofa Tatupu, who all pro, pro bowler, second round pick, crushed it for the Seahawks, has played against the Niners for a long time. How are you doing today, man? Well, I was good before I saw the highlights of the Niners uh, and the Seahawks in your opening. That's, can we change the <laughs> opening next time? Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll tweak it just a little bit. But Lofu does the Take 12 podcast, and we were trying to set something up to where we could learn a little bit. You know, we play the Seahawks all the time. They play us. We see them at least twice a year, this time three. So what I wanted to do was kind of jump in a little bit before we get to this week's matchup. Now, I went through your game logs my friend, and you played the Niners 11 times, if I'm not, uh, if I'm correct. Can you share maybe one of those games or a moment that kind of jumps out just nostalgic sake for your time against the 49ers before we jump into this week? Man, it was always a bloodbath. Like, <laughs> either way, that thing went back and forth. Um, you know, obviously some good memories, probably from my rookie year and, and then 07. 06, if you can remember, was a tough one when uh, – you guys swept us, and I think Frank ran for like 350 or like 340 total in two games. So, uh, yeah, but it, it it's, a, it's a great rivalry and uh, one that I was uh, grateful to be a part of. Man, that is awesome. And so if we jump forward, okay, it's weird to play a team three times. It just it doesn't happen that much. The NFC West has kind of been one of the powerhouses of the NFL, which this year perhaps not as much. You had the 49ers and Rams playing each other three times last year. As a player, going through something along these lines, did you ever have to experience one of those things where you played a division opponent again in the playoffs? No, we never we never squared off with a division opponent in the playoffs. Um, but the year before I got to Seattle, 2004, the uh, the greatest show on turf was still still around, and uh, they beat the Hawks three straight times that year, twice during the season, and then they came back up to the Pacific Northwest and uh, ended our playoff run uh, the year before I got here. So it was kind of in in their mind, you know, all the guys that um, I ended up becoming teammates with in 05 that set the stage for you know just I think out of the next 12 games, uh, the next six years, I think we went 11 and one. Uh, against the uh, the Rams, so it was it was always something in the back of their minds. You're like, hey man, not this team, not this time. <laughs> it, it's weird how like the NFL is just such a matchup driven league. Some teams just have what it takes to beat the other team, which the Seahawks have had over the 49ers for a very long time. It did kind of seem like this year started the shift. You know, it's only been two games, so it's a small sample size. But if we look at the 2022 season, the 49ers definitely. You know, in the two matchups versus Seattle, they handled their business pretty well. So let's shift to this week, Lofu, and let, let's see. In your opinion, what needs to happen for the Seahawks to be able to kind of right the wrongs that have taken place in the two games versus the 49ers so far this year? We have to play a perfect game. <laughs> oh, uh, Well, I won't put that much pressure on it. The, the turnovers. We cannot give that offense, that high-powered offense, any more opportunities um, with turnovers you guys won the turnover battle both times the first game by by a wide margin and that's what really hurt us it was a big big difference in the score at the end of the game this last one it was a little closer that that fumble right before right before the half was really a momentum killer uh, especially with us getting the ball back if we could have even if we just didn't give up a score right there it would have been a better position to to really you know fight in the second half but we did battle it was I think 21 13 was the final so it was but the game was not as close as, you know, the score, you know. Uh, right. Up, right. So 49ers had pretty firm control of that. And um, but really what needs to happen is they have to get Kenneth Walker, K-9. They got to get that rookie going because we didn't get anything going that last time. And then um, on defense, our pass rush has kind of come to life as of late. And so 
Um, really after the week after we played you, we started getting after the quarterback and it wasn't, we weren't sending extra blitzers, you know, it was, it was the, the regular seven man, uh, pressure, uh, or just the, the front four getting after it without blitzing. And so that that's huge. You have to do it. Um, I know our, our secondary is probably our strong suit right now. Um, but there, there's some things, I still don't think that run game shored up on our, our behalf. I think, you know, Teams have gotten behind or just haven't had the chance to to really run as much as they want. The Jets, they only ran it like 12 times. The, the I think Cam Akers went well over 119 carries. So it's just, you know, we can't we can't give any more help. Uh, it's been it's been tough back there on the run defense. So I'd like to see us commit an extra defender and uh, and then just I know it's it sounds crazy, but you have to with with Kittle. <laughs> um, Ayuk Debo's back healthy. He wasn't even there for the last game. We have to just let our talent on the back end try to match up. You know, it's funny. You talked about turnovers. I, I was lucky enough to be at the Thursday game up in Seattle, and I thought the turning point in the game, Brock Purdy's probably worst pass since he's been a quarterback. He hit Quandre Diggs, like, right in the hands, right over the middle. That was right before the, the fumble. So, yeah. yeah. You're right, though. And, and it was a 14-point swing because it was bad pass, bad pass, and we punt the ball, and then the fumble just kind of bailed out the entire team. Yeah, it was and seven, then seven three, and then like you're saying, it now all of a sudden fourteen three before the half. Which I, I'm a Longhorn, so Quandre Diggs like one of my favorite players in the NFL. That's right. Oh, look at that, baby! Come on, look man! At, uh, first, you, first you show the Niners highlights all over my Seahawks, and then you go Longhorns. You I'm know, sorry, man. You know I'm Vince sorry. Young and that that was that wasn't I wasn't there, but it was. It, I feel like I was there. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. But anyway, that's all right. We we got a lot of USC guys on our squad now. So, you know, Huff and all that stuff, which is one of the questions I want to ask you as a USC like alum, how do you like monitor the careers of guys like Drake Jackson, like Talano Hufunga? Do you keep up with those guys? And oh, what absolutely. are your thoughts? Absolutely, man. Um, you know, once a Trojan, always a Trojan and proud of those guys. Um, you know, I thought, you know, Hufunga is the Oh, man, I mean, we always knew he could hit. He was one of the most vicious, pound for pound, toughest hitters we, we've had in a while down at SC. But then the coverage element that he's added to his game, man, he, you know, he's making plays on the ball left and right. Um, so it's just, and then with that front seven you guys have, it, it's it's incredible. Um, so you know, you add him back there, and that's really solidified the whole defense, um, which is why you guys are versus the run or pass, you guys are really dominant. And so, but yeah. Uh, Drake Jackson, uh, London Drake, um, you know, Amon Ross St. Brown. I mean, the list goes on, man. I, I love it. And then we added a Trojan uh, in the offseason, Chenna Nuosu, who's probably been our most uh, reliable uh, uh, defensive player, uh, other than Diggs, of course, who's been doing it for a long time. Man, you see Tim jump off the film. Like, he turned into just an instant. And so, like, whatever we're doing, like our scouting reports and going through the All-22, it's just you don't have to, like, highlight Tim. He just pops. Uh, well, I, it's been impressive. I don't know what the Chargers were doing, man. Every time he got in, like I look, went back and looked at his his stats, and you know they don't look great. It was like thirty or forty tackles, and then you look at his playing time, and then you know in correlation, and it's like, man, every time he got out there, and you're, you you got the other Bosa brother there, and you got you know uh, they added Khalil Mack, but so I guess playing time went down. But it's I mean the guy just makes plays. Yeah. Now, uh, this is a question that comes in from the chat, Niner Zeno. Um, he says, do you think this 49ers defense, the current one, is better than what they had back in the Harbaugh years? If you had to look at Patrick Willis, Bowman, Smith Brothers. In your opinion, as kind of a rival guy that covers in-division opponent, do you think that this team mat defensively matches up with those kind of 2012, 2013 49ers defensive groups? First of all, amazing question. I love that you guys went defense because defense wins championships. <laughs> um, it, it's hard because you really have to, if you're talking about just from a defensive standpoint, yeah, man. I mean, this front seven can get, get after the quarterback without adding another pressure, you know, or they don't have to blitz to, to really rattle a quarterback. And, um, but I thought, Maybe maybe that secondary was a little stronger in the, in the Harbaugh, Harbaugh uh, area with Whitner and all those guys that just um, – they, they were ball hawks, man. And, uh, and then, of course, I don't know, linebackers, like you got Pat Willis going to be a Hall of Fame. Navarro Bowman, who had he not got injured, for sure Hall of Fame. And he was one of my, foes, my, my, my most fun to watch because he could do it all. Rush the passer, run defend, pass. He was amazing in pass coverage, whether it was man or zone. Uh, 
Justin Smith, my God, that Cowboy. I don't know if there was a more underrated guy, you know. I mean, we all respected and knew, but like that guy, I you know, Hall of Fame in my book, man. That guy's insane. And uh yeah, Alvin Smith, like it was it, it was it's crazy, man. So you guys have been really blessed with uh the diff the defenses over there. It is weird that we keep getting offensive centered head coaches, but they spend their draft capital on defense. So I like the balance that the 49ers have had. You guys have had Pete who continues just to build, you know, lots of studs. And I, one of your studs that I wanted to talk to you about this week is Jordan Davis. Um, not Jordan Davis. I'm sorry. Jordan Brooks uh, oh, yeah. who's a tech guy, first round linebacker. He's kind of been the heart and soul of the middle of the defense. He went on IR last week. Yeah. So, <laughs> It's been it's been linebacker by committee. We you know we've had Tanner Muse, we've had uh, Johnson in there, we've had several different packages to mix it up and try to kind of find what we do best. Um, you know, like I said, you know he was our best uh, tackler, our leading tackler the last two years. I think he even broke Bobby Wagner's record a year ago with like 190 something like that. It's um, it's tough to replace a guy like Wagner. Bob, and Brooks has done a good job, but now going on the injury uh, injury reserve with that ACL, it's tough, man. Um, and I think really that's where we're seeing, you know, digs and all the other guys pick up the, the slack. Yeah. It, it, it just, it worries me because Kyle Shanahan's number one thing to do when he schemes is to find a linebacker and just put them in a spin cycle, whether they're coming up for play action and then hitting, you know, the deep digs behind them and stuff. Yeah. And uh, right here, Josh, 40 hours faithful forever. He says, do you think the Niners will take advantage of Barton again? Because it seemed like every freaking play that Thursday night was wherever 57 was, it was either right outside of them, inside of them, behind them, or in front of them. Like, it's Shanahan drew a box and just went at 57 the whole game. Do you think he's going to be doing that again? Or does some of that go to Tanner Muse now? Yeah, it was a, it was a tough, tough matchup. You know, I mean, of course, a lot of those were to Kittle. And, I mean, <laughs> he's a mismatch for anybody in this league. I don't care who you are. Maybe only Fred Warner can cover him because uh, he goes against him in practice every day and he knows his moves. But, um, yeah, we're talking about a special guy in Kittle. And I, th I think, you know, what I love the most about Shanahan is how he does design his plays and his calling for the weak link of the defense. And um, it's been tough, tough duties in there for Barton. And I wouldn't be surprised if they try to attack him again. Um, Muse looked pretty good in coverage last week. Uh, you know, I remember him at Clemson, man. He was a fun he was a fun watch. Yeah, he's tough because, you know, he's kind of a safety, you know, playing linebacker, right? Um, so I think he'll, he'll only get better with more reps and time. Um, Johnson did some great things in in um, in the run defense, man. He was very active. And so we'll see. But it's going to take all of us, man. And everybody's just doing their job. Because, I mean, as, as we saw with that last matchup, that play they drew up, um, the, the double fake screen, left, right, and then down the middle to Kittle, it was like, man. So – you really you got to stay at home because they have weapons everywhere. And now Debo's back, which I mean that's one of my that's probably my favorite offensive player to watch these days. Oh really? Yeah, because he, he didn't play in the Thursday matchup. Neither did Elijah Mitchell. So you're oh, getting God. back two more guys. The the weird thing is the 49ers have been by far one of the most injured teams in the NFL the past five years. This is the healthiest they've been. Now we got our quarterbacks out you know, Jimmy Garoppolo and Trey Lance. But outside of that, there's only one starter that is missing, and that's Emmanuel Mosley, our starting corner. Mm -hmm. That's it. Uh, Javon Kinlaw's back, a lot of guys. Ooh. So my question to you, and Vegas seems to say it's, you know, 10 points. Some say 9.5, some say 10.5 point favorites. How big of a factor, this, this question comes from Dan, does the weather, because it's supposed to be rainy, is this an equalizer? Does this bring an advantage to the Seahawks, in your opinion? No, it's a disadvantage. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out. Yeah, we brought our weather down with us. Uh, it's been raining all week up here. But, um, no, it, because we really have to rely on Gino because we we have not got the ground game going against you guys. It's it's uh, So I, I don't think in the third matchup, like, you know, you guys have played seven in the box, you know, most of the time, not even committing an extra defender down there to stop us. So, that that's very concerning for me. But then also on offense, you know, we need Gino and our receivers and our tight ends to get going because if we don't have the ground game going, it's going to be a long day. Now, okay, you brought up Kenneth Walker earlier. You talk about the ground game. The last three weeks, Kenneth Walker has rushed for 107, 133, and 114. Yeah. It seems to kind of be like if you're going to win this game, You've got to rush. Now, the 49ers have not allowed anybody to rush over 70 yards individually. 
Oh, uh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but here's my thing. The last time we played you guys, he rushed 12 times for 47 yards. Do you mm-hmm. think that Seattle will commit to the run this time? It was a close game, I relatively. Think, I think we gave up on the run too too early in the last game. I think, you know, it was a two-score game, but I think we probably hit the panic button a little quick and just abandoned the run completely. Because, yeah, like you're saying, he had close to a, a four-yard average. And so, I mean, that's good. But I, I also expected, you know, maybe some more screens to play a factor. When you have yeah. Bosa and Armstead, who was just getting healthy for our game last time, uh, when you have those guys just – if they're – if you're sitting back there, they're going to tee off, man. And so the the equalizer is like, you know, running some screens, some draws, just to slow them down and think like, okay, I can't just go haul ass up field. I have to maintain uh, gap integrity and rush lane integrity. Yeah, I think – I don't know. Now, Drake Greenlaw, who you know, he's guy. he's had his best games against y'all. Now, he missed last week with the back issue. He is limited, but it seems like he's probably going to be back this week. Um, now, I think that is one opportunity that if he, for some reason, he can't take advantage of starting snaps, I think that's one area I'm going to be a little bit worried about. But in your opinion, Lofa, what would you say is the Seattle advantage? If you had to pick an area of the game or a specific matchup that you're like, okay, Seattle has to take advantage of this area where they have an advantage, what comes to mind? An advantage? Yeah. Our punter? Oh, again, <laughs> you talk about my horns with Dixon. Is it, is, baby. Is Dixon horn? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just saying, yeah, he's got the ability to really flip field positions. And, I mean, I think if we really – for this game not to get away with us, you cannot have any turnovers and you're going to have to really play field position battle because I don't know how much you have to stop the run. And then you just, you got to, Hey, if Brock Purdy beats us, he beats us, man. Um, you know, kudos to you, Brock and, and Shanahan for, for the coaching job you're doing because it's a rookie quarterback. Um, you know, this isn't, this isn't a bowl game. This is, this is the playoffs and it's win and go on or win and go home, man. It's uh, it's tough, and so if a rookie quarterback is able to beat you through the air, then that's how you do it. But I, you got to commit an extra defender. McCaffrey, you saw he had 130, I think, the last time we played, and um, it looked like he even left some plays out there, you know. So, um, I yeah, I don't know if we have a clear advantage anywhere. I am gonna say punter because Michael Dixon is a weapon. Y'all special teams. Hey, your 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 punt group scored a touchdown against us in week two. Um, um it, it's. Goal. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it was a block field goal. Last year was the fake punt. It still oh, hurts yeah. hurts my soul. I was so mad at that game. Uh, and for us 49ers fans, like, I'm just going to be honest. Like, we just like you guys so much because like of what you. y'all have done to us in the past. Uh, going back to that Bowman playoff game, right, where he got injured and yeah. then he had that jerk fan throwing stuff. I know that's not Seahawks. I'll say this. Whenever I, I had my first game um, up at the 12 at Lumen Field, Man, fans were incredible. The experience were incredible. It was awesome. Just nice chipping back and forth, but completely respectful. Well, that I, was the I, Thursday game? Yeah, the Thursday game. It was yeah, awesome. Was half the place was red. Of course you had it a was. good time, man. We we travel pretty good, at least I recently. Was, I was, you know, they had me walking around, you know, um, doing some appearances, and I couldn't tell who made a play, whether it was the Niners or us, because the, the place was loud for both. So that was a little disheartening. Hopefully we travel well this weekend. And I think know. they're going to show out because with the rain, I don't know, ticket prices are going down. So for people that are like waiting, you're going to be all right. You're going to be able to get some tickets. Um, Josh has this question for you. He says, thoughts on the Ward Metcalf matchup. You know, last, yeah. it, whenever they played on Thursday night, yeah. they had Ward traveling. Everywhere Ooh. DK went, he was on top of them. Physical. It seemed like Ward definitely got the best case of that case of that matchup, but I mean Metcalf's just so big. Can he turn that around this week? Do you think? Uh, I don't know. We'll see. I, I do like that. That was a great matchup to watch. Um, you know, Ward played his ass off, man. He gave him fits, and so um, we'll see. Uh, Gino's been distributing the ball pretty evenly, and I think that's what that balance. You know, not just between the run and the pass, but also between his targets. Um, the, yeah, we. We actually haven't targeted, you know, him or Lockett as much as we'd like to. Um, but, you know, we've done whatever we could just to win those last two games just to get into the playoffs. So that that's a tough matchup. Uh, War, War's been playing great. And I, I think for 49ers fans, the opposite corner, Diamador Lenore, uh, Oregon guy, goes by Demo. That's what we call him. He's struggled a little bit late. 
And so he's going to get the Tyler Lockett matchup. In, in my opinion, that's the one where I'm just like, ooh. If if I was the Seahawks, I would be peppering targets to Tyler Lockett. And so I'm just like, ooh, that's the one where I'm just a little bit concerned. Not too concerned about DK, but y- y'all's two wide receivers are beasts. The running back's great. I, well, I wonder if they travel ward then, knowing that, you know? I, I they, wonder if- I think that they will. They didn't too much against Devontae Adams, which was interesting okay. because when we played the Raiders, he traveled with them for a little bit, but then they just kind of left him alone. So I, I don't know. I, I'm not quite sure. I didn't, DK. I didn't see that game. Did you guys get the lead early? Is that? No, I was back and forth the whole time, man. The really? Jared Stiddle freaking shootout. I like Jared uh, Stiddle. I think yeah. he, he He showed out against us. I'll say that. Um, but we'll see here now. Okay, here we go. Let's do this. I want to, I want to get some perspective on the Seahawks future. Geno Smith broke the record for most passing yards by a Seahawks quarterback. Do you believe in him long-term? He also broke completions and, uh, I think percentage completion percentage too, man. He, his year was interesting, especially whenever you just look at statistics, right? So are you all in on Geno? Uh, long term, I am a believer. Um, and well, and we, let's let's define long term. <laughs> <laughs> I I believe that a two year deal with a third year team option allows us to go get a quarterback. Doesn't have to be in the first round. I know we got that fifth overall pick coming from the Broncos. Thank you, Russ. Uh, but I, I don't think they have to go quarterback there. I'd rather see them go you know, defensive interior or rush edge, much like what you guys got. I need it. We need a game changer in the middle, in the trenches. And so hopefully that's where they go. Um, there's Brock Purdy, you know, and I, I wonder how much of it is Purdy and how much of it is Shanahan, the QB whisperer, um, because, you know, I think that could change a lot of people's perspectives in terms of what, you know, when they need a quarterback, you know, to what is he? He was Mr. Irrelevant, right? The last pick of the yeah. draft. And he's he hasn't lost yet. I mean, so – uh, a lot of that has to do with the great play column by Shanahan and, and how he works with quarterbacks and gets the best out of them. But, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see what they do in the draft, but I don't think we need to hit the panic button, go get a quarterback. I'm not saying he's going to take a hometown discount, but I think being in the system, as long as Waldron doesn't go anywhere, um, I, I mean, you know, as a 10 year vet, he can pick up any system pretty quickly. Um, that's, you know, spending the time, you know, as a backup, he, he knows what he's doing. And uh, just been so impressed with his, you know, mental capability, the having that fast processor to get the ball out on time, which two rookie tackles, as well as they played, he has gotten the ball out in a timely fashion to limit those sacks, which, you know, Russ got sacked a lot. And, yeah, he and did. Uh, you know, it was from holding on to the ball. So I'm a believer in Gino. Hope we lock him up for two years with the third year team option. And uh, I think we build around him because, look, we're in the playoffs when nobody gave us a chance. What if we gave him a little more, especially on the defensive side? There's just been too much on, on Gino's shoulders uh, trying to carry us. It's been impressive. You know, I'm not, I, I'm an anti Russ guy just because of what he's done to us in the past and this year. He beat us this year too, even though they were terrible. And so, like, I loved the whole we'll see what happens between him and Drew Locke. And I was always on Team Gino, but I don't know, man. Part of me just says he's so efficient. But can he get you a Super Bowl, right? Because I feel like in today's NFL, if you don't have a guy that could be a top five, you got to go get one. I'll tell you what gets you a Super Bowl. Ask Matthew Stafford. A defense oh, does. there you go. There you go. Man, I like that. Let's man. get serious. I love it. From the Godfather, Nicholas. Uh, what's up, Nick, man? Thank you so much for the gift. He says, shout out to Lofa. I appreciate his analysis, but we're at home. And we're going to win big on sa- Saturday. <laughs> let's go, Niners. Appreciate that, Nick. Thank you. Whatever, Nick. <laughs> so uh, let me, thanks for tuning in nick yeah he's he's a good dude he's coming in. he's flying out from jersey to go to the game this weekend which is going to be a blast and for oh, everybody that's coming out are you going to be at the game lofo hold up nick how are you a 49ers fan from jersey <laughs> i i need get back in this chat nick type away i need to know how you're a niners fan from jersey uh yeah uh, th- I i'm from dallas team. i'm from dallas you're from dallas I'm from Dallas. And so I had a stepdad that was a diehard Cowboys fan I couldn't stand. And so I rooted for the 49ers just in spite of them. And it stuck. That was it, man. Well, you got a story. Yeah, there we go. I need Uh, to find that next story. 
Yeah, Nick. Nick's a good dude. He'll, he'll jump in. You got to let us know, Nick. Now, for those that are coming out to the game, rain or shine, we are going to be tailgating out in blue lot number one. Uh, unlimited drinks, food, liquor. We got you covered. I'm it's going to be a great man. time. There we go, man. So it's going to be a mess, but we're going to be together. We're going to be having a good time. We'll walk to the stadium together. Uh, make sure we show everybody what we're about. Um, now, I'll, 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 Nick's going to be just drinks. There we go, man. So, hey, I'm just saying, you coming down, man. We got you, man. We got you. So, Pete Carroll, oldest coach in the NFL, 71 years young. He going to be around for a little while, or you think he's uh... – He's the Benjamin Button of coaching, man. The guy just keeps getting younger. I... <laughs> you see the video of him riding around the facility on a scooter today? Yeah, that was, that was a little <laughs> puzzling. I don't know if he's tired, long season. You know, that 17th game might have got him. but Because usually he's trying to get his steps in. That guy's always playing basketball or doing something, so – that, but that was a funny video. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Nick's got you. He says, easy. <laughs> he says, Jerry Rice, I played wide receiver. He was like the MJ of the NFL. Yeah, a lot of Jerry Rice. He brought a lot of people in. And I'm hoping I got guys like Debo right. and Nick Bosa and all those things kind of bring that in as well. Now, Lofa, you're a defensive guy. If I gave you a vote for defensive player of the year this year, who's your vote? I think you got to go Bosa. What, 18 and a half? Is that what he yeah, had? I was fighting yeah. it for a while because there was for a while Micah Parsons, you know, who was a linebacker that they moved to DN. You know, my 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 confidence in Micah was more that, you know, he doesn't have all the pieces that Nick has around him, you know. and But obviously Nick is the focal point of that pass rush, man. And, like, you always know where he is, and they're always putting two guys over there, and still, you know, he's finding a way to get to the quarterback – absolute beast and uh, i mean this is he's only two years removed from the acl too right like yeah insane what he's been able to do in in this you know couple years and he got 15 and a half sacks last year this year 18 and a half man. we'll see man it, his goal was to get 19 and a half to tie alden smith's rec franchise record uh but he didn't get it and so sure i, I like that year. There's a little bit more hunger in there, I'm hoping. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah. I, I kind of like – I wanted him to get it, but he's still got something to fight for. All right, Lofa, before we let you go, your predictions for the game. You got a score or something that you think is going to happen that you want to leave us with? I do. We're not going to turn the ball <laughs> over, right? We're going to run the ball to, to shorten the game and slow it down, you know, keep, keep your uh, offense off the field. And then we got to convert when we get to the red zone, man. That is really – field goals will not beat this team, will not beat the Niners. So I think it's a fairly low-scoring game. If we come out of it, we can't give up more than – we can't give up – I think I get, I went 20-16 to 16 on my podcast, the Take 12 podcast, and uh, but that's that's also me being a homer. I'm not going to go against my, my Hawks, just like you're not going against your Niners. Uh, but, yeah, we just – we have to limit their opportunities. Do not give them any extra chances. And that's the only way we'll have a chance in this game because the Niners are stacked, man. It It's – I feel like this is probably one of the best rosters in football. Um, and I think the fact that the 49ers keep winning with the third-string quarterback, which Purdy's been great, but – you won with Jimmy, you won with Brock. Like it just seems like it just it's just moving forward too much. You see teams like the Eagles, they miss their quarterback, they start losing. Yeah. Um, and you know, again, you look at the AFC powerhouses, Josh Allen, you know, you've got Patrick Mahomes, you've got the stud oh. Joe Burrow, they can Burrow? drive their teams. Yeah. 49ers are not that team. They don't have that quarterback. Brock maybe, but yeah. we'll deal with that later. Maybe. But the roster's there. I think you said it so well, man. If there's no turnovers, the rain becomes a factor. You establish the run as the Seahawks. The game could get ugly, but I don't think it's going to. I don't. I, <laughs> at least I don't. Uh, at least ugly for the 49ers fans. That's just on my side. But we'll see. Uh, yeah, I respect it. Hey, I got a question to you. Uh, what do you What do you do at the quarterback spot? I mean, you got Jimmy G, you got Trey Lance, and now you got a guy like who? If he makes a, a deep run, NFC Championship, Super Bowl, what do you do there? Yeah, I think Jimmy G's gone. I don't think there's any chance he comes back. And I'm happy for him. Like, I really want him to be the guy. I want him to get paid. I want a, a team to put all their confidence in. Probably the Jets. I think he's going to the Jets, but whatever. So Jimmy's gone. Um, I think you just roll with these two quarterbacks, these two young rookie quarterbacks. If Brock, you got to stay with Brock right now. I'm the I, biggest Trey Lance guy in the world. Yeah. But you got to stay with Brock. This is. It's, it's incredible what he's doing, right? 
I mean, he's leading the NFL since he came in in touchdowns, pass well, rating, and wins. Like, is that, is that good? I think it's pretty good. <laughs> I think it's pretty good. It's 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 only five games, but he scored over thirty points in four out of five games. Yeah, yeah. I'm absolutely. sorry, five out of six games. My bad. Let me. Uh, that's yeah. even better. Yeah, absolutely. Look, look at Nick. He's back, man. Thank you, Nick. He says, "Good luck with that one, Lofa." <laughs> Any given <laughs> Sunday, they say, but this game's on a Saturday. Oh, <laughs> well played, Nick. Okay, <laughs> bravo, my man. Well, Lofa, before we let you go, is there anything that you want to promote or ways that we can tune in and catch your show? Uh, uh, we know you're a Seahawks guy, but we won't hold that against you. Yeah, I mean, maybe just give us a you know a listen when we play the Niners next year. <laughs> That's all I, I have. It. But that's uh, awesome. We'll have you on the show next year. I would love like to do it. that, cross promote the shows. But yeah, it's called the Take 12 Podcast. We're in our, our third year. It's been amazing. Um, I did start it up during the pandemic and I just had an opportunity on a guest spot that became a permanent thing. Just uh, and it's been the time of my life. We we even traveled out to Germany. We're gonna be doing some road trips. I'll try to I'll try to get the San Fran one in there so we can party with you in lot one next year. Um, but yeah, man, it's been a bless. I get to talk football, which is, you know, one of the loves of my life. So I'm That's having right. a blast, man. Well, dude, I, it's, it's weird. Like, you know, we've watched you play for so long. And so putting the personality and just, again, the kindness, it was funny. I asked Lofa before we jumped on, like, is there anything I could promote? He literally said just kindness. And so, so much I, respect, man. I appreciate that. I spent too many years beating people up and getting beat up. It's time, <laughs> time to turn the page. Good people, man. Well, hopefully we get a party one day, and it's going to be a fun game Saturday, man. Best of luck to you. Hey, best of luck to you guys, even though you don't need it. Uh, much love, <laughs> much love, much respect, and stay blessed. All right. Until next time, stay strong, faithful. Mm -hmm.